no, no, no. If the visual is misleading, that's because it's only in your mind. This is not an election campaign starting off in UP. This is just me with a sound bar. Yes, it's because it's this light and this interesting looking. I thought I'll start differently. There were people who were saying I could start like this, but I thought this was more the whole... Don't think of it as a LUT, okay? I mean, that is not what the whole idea was. I'm just trying to show that this is very nicely put together, a Xiaomi soundbar, the first one that they've introduced in India. They've been doing it before abroad, especially in China. And this is a pretty sweet piece of equipment because the price point, about four to 5,000 rupees, has enough of the drivers and the tweeters and everything else that you need. A lot of inputs in this also, including optical, which I think is the most important thing if you're actually trying to put this on with a TV, which is the most important. And speaking of TVs, we also have a Xiaomi TV. I won't be holding it like this for sure. 55 inch OLED 4K. Ever since Xiaomi came in to this market, they've absolutely and totally changed the Indian market for TVs, for the kind of price point, for OLED, for 4K. And the competition has to really scramble now. So what did they do with the next level of a 55 inch? That's what we'll tell you. Then we move on to a classic war. And I love this war. It's the Nike and uh, Adidas, it's the Coke, Pepsi war. It's TV versus projection. At one time, TVs were ahead in every which way because you had to do so much to get a projector to really give you that performance, dim the lights, take care of the bulbs, all of that. And then projectors became really innovative. But this time again, TVs have done a new thing. Curved TVs have come in. Multi-wall TVs have come in. So lots of new things out there. So it's a great show I have for you, including a noise cancellation headphone from Sony. And no, it's not going to cost you your entire bank account. Let's get started with today's show. Want to enjoy some cinematic bliss sitting at home but on a tight budget? Xiaomi has something just for you. And for those with deeper pockets, BenQ has some top-notch projectors for your home. And lots left over from the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, so keep watching. And of course, as always, before we get into all the great stuff I have for you on the show, let's take a look at all the news coming in from the world of gadgets. Apple's shot on iPhone contest is now open. Users of the iPhone XS, XS Max and the XR can submit pictures that they have taken and the 10 best ones will be selected to be featured on billboards and advertisements across cities. Interestingly, an earlier post had stated that no cash prize would be given to winners. However, after backlash on social media, Apple seems to have changed this and will now be giving the winners a part of the license fee. So iPhone users, time to get clicking. Amazon soon may have a new delivery buddy and this time it's a robot. The company is testing these delivery robots called Scout in Washington. A fleet of six Scouts is making a debut and Amazon says that they will avoid obstacles, pedestrians and pets on way. We'll start off with our dual prong approach of the two Xiaomi products. Both, of course, can be attached to each other. The Xiaomi TV, I already told you about it. Xiaomi came in about a year, year and a half back with their first TV. They'd been having TVs out there in China and really ruling the roost out there. And people kept asking, when does that TV come into India? So when they did come in, obviously, they came in aggressive, both on specs and price. Now they're moving to their second and third generation TVs. And this is a really interesting one we're going to show you today. 55 inches, 4K, and once again, a very aggressive price. But I think the main thing that I really want to bring to you is this. And there's a reason why I'm saying this is an important one. I believe all TVs now should be sold just as a display panel. There should be absolutely nothing in audio terms out there. No speaker, no audio technology. Put in all you have into making that TV look absolutely fabulous in terms of the visual, the screen, the kind of technology, and take away all audio because they say 95% of people who buy a TV bigger than 50 or 55 inches actually add on the audio because the audio that comes from the TV is absolutely nothing. So what we'll do is, in this test, we will first take a look at the TV, then we'll take a look at the audio of the TV and then we'll add this and tell you the difference. Take a look. Xiaomi has been consistently throwing the ball out of the park with its range of devices. With its foray across a range of product categories, the Mi range has ensured that quality products are available to users and that too at an affordable price. 
After hitting some serious numbers with their mobile phones, Xiaomi has been performing well in the television division too and is now out of the Mi LED TV 4K Pro 55 inch. Let's start with the biggest feature about the TV, which is its price. At 40,000 rupees, the television set is priced much lower than competition with the same size. The bezels are fairly thin and it measures about 4.9 mm at its thinnest point. This may not be the thinnest or the best looker out there, but it is fairly good looking. Though at times we felt that the tabletop was a little flimsy. The TV supports 4K and HDR. The smart TV has Android and also Xiaomi's own Patchwall OS in it. So while you could download Android apps on it, you also get Patchwall that combines and displays content. They have tie-ups with various content partners, however, as of now, the two big partners, Amazon and Netflix, are missing. The Mi TV also supports voice commands, however, the remote that accompanies it is a simple one with no voice control. In terms of connectivity, there are three HDMI ports, ARC compatible, two USB ports, Ethernet port, and only SPDIF port for audio, which may be a limitation for some users. There are two 10 watt speakers at the back. It has 2 GB RAM and 8 GB storage on board. And the perfect sidekick to this superhero is the Mi soundbar. In order to make the TV sleek and slim, often companies compromise on the audio quality. That's when a soundbar like this can make a difference. And when it comes at an affordable price of 5,000 rupees, the deal is even sweeter. A single unit weighing about 2 kgs, the long and wide chassis houses four speakers. There are two 20mm dome tweeters and two 2.5-inch woofers for bass. It is built using tough plastic and the front is encased in fabric for a better appeal. It can be wall-mounted or placed on a table. It has a proprietary 16-volt power adapter. All controls are at the top but sadly there is no additional remote with it. Don't expect these speakers to deliver the kind of audio and thumb that high-end soundbars could do. This is far from it but then it is also available for a fraction of that price. We tried a simple blind test to gauge the audio of the Mi TV. And then the Mi soundbar. And the difference was clear. While the TV audio was quite loud in itself, but with the soundbar on, it was more enhanced and clearer. If the size of the room is much larger and your requirements are abundant, you may want to consider other options. The Mi soundbar is more fitting in a scenario where you would want to better a TV set's average audio and enhance daily binge watching. Now before we move on to BenQ and the war between TV and projectors and how BenQ really seems to be owning that war, we'll go back to CES in Vegas. Now, a lot of things happened in CES, but one of the most interesting ones was, of course, wearables. When wearables came, very exciting category. But as it carried on, it just became about your wrist. So not a wearable, it became, became a wristable, right? But now what we are seeing finally is that wearables start off from the head, move downwards, I mean, to all areas, of course, don't just think of one move downwards and actually end up with things around your feet. Very interesting that almost every part of your body now, including your brain, can now be analyzed. So I'm thinking of, you know, coming up and doing this for my own team out here that's actually putting this show together. That device that can actually do brain analysis would be a big asset to all of us. Let's take a look at what happened at CES. <laughs> Wearables, a category that has expanded by leaps and bounds every CES. Also a category that ensures that every little real estate of your body has a gadget with a purpose. So we have you completely covered from head to toe. So starting from the top, there is the Muse headband that helps you meditate better. The brain sensing band measures your brain activities and converts the signals that it receives into audio feedback via the built-in headphones. It plays sounds according to your mood to help you achieve better relaxation. For instance, in a stressed mood, the muse will play out storm sounds and if you're in a cheerful mood, you will hear the sound of birds. It aims to improve focus and guide those who are new to meditation. Something for your eyes now. HTC launched a new version of the VR headset with eye tracking. 
so users can navigate within VR apps by just gazing instead of physical buttons. With the HTC Vive Pro i, it's all in the looks. The next device will probably take you to an episode of Black Mirror. The OrCam My Me camera is a sleek, wearable camera that can be magnetically attached or clipped on to a piece of clothing. When you meet anyone, the camera scans the piece and refers to your social media or its own photo gallery to identify the person and then the name and details of the person pops up on your phone. It can also recognize narrative clips to help you recall a conversation or churn out key points at a meeting. With this, it can almost log your entire social life and tell you how much time you spend with whom. Talk about AI entering personal space. Then there is something for your tummy too. The Welt Smart Belt monitors the wearer's body, health, eating habits and physical activities. It sends alerts on your phone if you have overeaten and helps to meet your fitness goals. Now let's go below the belt. The D-Free is a bladder control wearable. Targeted at senior citizens, it is attached to the lower abdomen and uses ultrasound to monitor bladder movement. It thus sends a notification on the phone to prompt the user to go to the loo, a useful device for the elderly. To relieve you of chronic pain, the Quell 2 is a smart piece of tech that has to be tied on the leg. It is powered by Neurostimulation Microchip. The device automatically adapts to changes in body position and accordingly automatically starts therapy to the part that needs assistance. Didn't we say we have got you completely covered? And now for that classic war, like I said. So this has been a war now for a very long time and I'm going to set perspective for you right now. Years back, it was an easy one. If you wanted to put something in your living room, it had to be a TV. A projector was just not right for you in your bedroom, in your living room. In a media room, a projector made sense. Now that has completely switched. Think about it if you're thinking of a really large screen. What would you buy today? Either if you've got an extreme amount of money, you can think of a 100-inch TV. It will really set you back big bucks. But a projector, because of the fact that today with laser projectors, with projectors that have 6,000 to 10,000 lumens, you can have the brightest light, you can have sunlight streaming into a room, and we'll show you that. It will still need no dimming of the light, no changes, and you can have up to two, 300 inches of the brightest picture ever. But then TVs caught up again at CES. We've shown you that. Things like a curved TV, things like a Samsung wall where you can build your own TV in small little blocks. So is TV making a comeback? We'll show you three new projectors BenQ has launched. And we also spoke to the person behind it about the TV versus projector war. It is one of those age-old debates. Pepsi or Coke? Nike or Reebok? Televisions or projectors? Gone are the days when projectors had limitations about the kind of room, light density and the projection distance. Projectors today give a cinematic experience at home with top-notch colours and image sharpness. Adding to the portfolio of high-spec devices, BenQ launched the 4K home cinema projectors W2700 and W5700. Both are DLP projectors that offer long-lasting colour projection and have also included an additional cinematic colour technology and supports HDR ProTech along with HDR10 and HLG formats. With 3840 by 2160 pixel resolution and 8.3 million pixels for each frame, they deliver 4K performance. The W2700 is designed to support DCI-P3 color standard with up to 94% industry standard color space. It has a contrast ratio of about 30,000 is to 1 and brightness of 2,000 lumens. The lamp life is of about 15,000 hours. The bigger W5700 is touted 100% coverage of industry standard color space. This one has a contrast ratio of 50,000 is to 1 and brightness of 1,800 lumens. Both models have individual factory calibration that ensure great color accuracy. The DCI-P3 compliance essentially means that the reds and greens will be enhanced and it will also enable auto color and tone mapping techniques. This will enable better brightness and contrast range. The price of the W2700 starts from about 2.5 lakh rupees while the W5700 is under 3 lakh rupees. 
The X12000H was also on display. This biggie has a brightness of 2200 lumens. With a wide color gamut and high brightness, it is as close to commercial digital cinema as you can get. It is priced close to 5 lakh rupees. W2700 is uh, ideal for your living room projection kind of a th thing uh, and W5700 and uh, X12000H are primarily for your media room. So for those people who have got exclusive media room where they want a screen size of uh, anywhere between 120 inches to going up to almost 200 inches size, these two models are ideal uh, while the uh, W2700 is uh, ideal for uh, projection size of about up to 120 inches. However, it can do up to 300 inches. BenQ also gave us a sneak peek of their soon to launch smart projectors, the E520 and the GV with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and portability, making projection of content very easy. On the show right now, we'll take a quick break when we come back lots more. They say that about five things that a true nerd or a geek really truly requires. And I don't have time to go through the list. I will do this story with you one day that if you're a true techie, there are five things you must own. One of them is a noise cancellation headset. But Sony, which now has been declared to be making the best noise cancellation headsets in the world, they've actually beaten or at least come very close to beating Bose, comes up with something that will not absolutely bankrupt you. Now, as always, Sony comes up with something which is a great product, but an absolutely useless rubbish name, which is the WH-CH700N. I can give you a guarantee that other than maybe one or two of you, if I was to ask you one hour later, this is great, but what was the name you wouldn't remember? So Sony Try and think this out. I mean, I know there's some Japanese guy sitting somewhere who seems to think this is the way to go. But believe me, it's not. Come up with names, real names. This should be your code or serial number, not the name for a headset. I mean, you do it to all your products. Anyway, that's just me venting. At this present moment, we're going to take a look at Sony coming up with a wireless noise cancellation stereo headset, which can also do voice commands, has a lot more in terms of the fact that you can use Google or Siri, and you can use it in multiple different ways. So let's take a look. At about 13, 14,000 rupees, is this the one to buy? <laughs> True audio files put great thought and money to purchase the right kind of audio system and accessories. And when it comes to the right pair of headphones, they don't mind spending an arm and a leg. Sony Bose Sennheiser has some of the finest noise cancellation headphones, but they are all at a price. Today we have gone budget. What do you do when you want to enjoy your music but your pocket is tight? After the 1000 XM3, Sony is out with the WHCH700N, a pair of affordable noise cancellation headphones. Plastic has been used predominantly in the overall design. The headband is soft and the cups are wide enough and comfortable when worn. The bottom of the ear cups have the audio controls. There's the micro USB port on the left which seems a little dated since most gadgets now have moved to the Type-C port. There's also the 3.5mm audio jack next to it. The right side cups house the toggle for playback and the volume control. The buttons are easy to use but it may take some time to get used to it. The earphones turned about 90 degrees and they may not be the most comfortable while travelling. Most budget headphones compromise on audio quality, but that does not seem to be the case with the Sony 700N. We tried them out in different scenarios and found that it has a tight and punchy bass but never really got overpowering. While noise cancelling on the headphones is good, it should not be considered its big feature. The earpads are not too deep because of which we felt the noise cancellation was not as strong. It comes with Google Assistant support and you can use voice commands for various functions. The battery life is impressive with about 35 to 40 hours on a single charge. It also supports quick charge and 10 minutes charge would give you about 60 minutes battery. All in all, the Sony WHCH700N deliver good sound with a comfortable design, satisfying sound quality, average noise cancellation and superior battery. However, remember that at 13,000 rupees, they are budget headphones 
and there are instances where that shows. Well, that then was the show for this week. We'll be back next week with a whole lot more.